Good morning, and thank you for joining us for a presentation by Subsurface Clarity on our integrated 3D seismic data and interpretation workflows. My name is Ken Abdullah, and I'm the principal geoscientist um, with Subsurface Clarity. Clemence Prazouk is our senior geologist, and Elena Kozi Abdullah is our administrative manager. We are a small consulting uh, company that was formed in February of 2017, specifically to provide very detailed and carefully worked subsurface analysis at both the exploration and uh, production scales of detail. In terms of our work and technology, we work with PaleoScan and Geoteric. We have licenses for both of these software suites. And these are very innovative software tools um, that are available to us. And it allows us to work in concert, moving the volumes and the various products between these two packages. We work from preconditioning the post act data in terms of noise cancellation and frequency bandwidth, all the way through to um, 3D property modeling and to geocellular modeling, where we are able to export static geocellular models. These models are based on 3D property models, which are guided um, by our seismic data volumes. We provide your teams with um, very rapid, highly sophisticated results. And in the process and through collaboration and technology transfer, we are able to actually provide your team members with a window into how we actually work and how we think and how we approach subsurface problems. All the way, like I said, from conditioning the data to final geocellular modeling. From our standpoint, we consider efficient subsurface analysis to really require integrated workflows. And um, integrated workflows from the standpoint of not just the fact that we are integrating seismic data and well data, but we are staying within the 3D volume as an overall spatial location, positioning, you might say, um, data set where we are able to move seamlessly through to the 3D property models and then to the geocellular models. So we never lose or um, move out of that um, grid space provided to us by the 3D data volumes. When we look at geology, geophysics, and petrophysics, our work focuses on the geology and geophysics portions. And the slide in front of us here shows the geology portions highlighted in orange. These will be the areas which we cover during our standard uh, workflows, everything from well log analysis all the way through to seismic facies based um, cross plotting and um, analysis. On the geophysics side as well, um, we work with horizons, faults, horizon stacks, attributes, neural networks, and we also can provide post stack inversion, um, simple post stack inversion as part of our workflows. We don't currently do petrophysical analysis in house but we will take the client's petrophysical work, whether it's mineral models or lithophases work, um, all the way through to various um, rock property work, which is then folded into our 3D property modeling. The goal here being ultimately for us to provide a static reservoir model um, in a format that we export in the Petrel binary format that is um, importable into, into our your in-house packages. We also stop, if necessary, at different phases in our, in our workflows. So our, our workflows can be tailored specifically to that portion of the work that you would consider to be of value for us to assist you with. So when we look at the question of the subsurface framework, um, the goal really would be to produce within the 3D interpretation, integrating well logs and seismic data, a realistic representation of the data, not just around the well bore itself, but away from the wells. And here we, we can see, for instance, where well log tops that may have been correlated, perhaps more based on a lithostratigraphic type of um, criteria, we are able to follow more of a chronostratigraphic correlation based on the relative geological time model that we develop as part of our initial workflows. So lithostratigraphy, chronostratigraphy, um, the various seismic and sequence stratigraphic techniques are all folded into our final data set. 
In terms of our stratigraphic analysis, the Paleoscan software allows us to create this relative geological time model, which then allows us to flatten the data, um, creating for us the gaps caused by erosion or non-deposition, which then allow us to pick the major boundaries between our depositional sequences. So this is a data-driven approach, which then allows us to create isopack maps of each of the different uh, sequences, which allow us to see the shifting depot centers through time within your 3D volume, or I should say within the area uh, covered by your 3D data volume. What we're looking at here is a sort of a, a montage of some of the maps that we produce as part of our stratigraphic interpretation. This does not represent everything that we do, but we're just animating here a horizon within your 3D volume shown here in sort of this yellow and green color. And we're seeing a, a series of maps. This would be a sort of a more edge detection type map where we are picking up the faults, which we would ultimately then map um, both in an automated as well as semi-automated fashion. We have the structure map outputs we also do very detailed high definition frequency decomposition work, as well as generating um, ISO core maps that show the shifting depth centers, sometimes fault controlled, sometimes focused off things like shelf margins. And here we have a sort of a traditional RMS type map looking for some of the amplitude bursts associated in this case with um, the gas fields. So when it comes to the structural analysis in terms of fault analysis, we use um, CMY blends, that's cyan, magenta, and yellow, where we highlight um, three different independent edge detection uh, algorithms. In this case, the tensor, the structural oriented discontinuity, and the structural oriented semblance from the geoteric suite. And here we can see the edges associated with slope channels, and we also see edges associated with the faults as we scroll up through the 3D volume. Pock marks are also evident on the upper slope, and we can see the shelf margin gradually marching out towards you here, with the slope channels feeding out into some of the deep water deposits that are um, often very attractive reservoir targets. So we use blended color volumes, both in RGB and CMY, to help with both stratigraphic and structural interpretations that are folded into our final um, interpretation products that we export and present to your teams. Another important component of our workflow is linking the seismic facies from um, the 3D volumes into what will ultimately be our property modeling. So within the geoteric software, this is a, a blended volume here of five volumes. The colors that we're looking at are sort of dominated by the RGB blends that we've used. But we see um, geometric patterns, which from an interpretation standpoint, point towards a particular style of deposition, a particular depositional environment, and potentially when integrated with well data, we can tie this back to reservoir predictability. So the steps that we take in terms of the interpretation um, approach is that we select polygons within discrete geometric patterns that we think have geological significance. And then within the seismic facies um, software tools, um, the machine goes out and it categorizes everywhere within the volume, not just within this particular map view, where that particular um, selection of voxel values within the polygon is satisfied throughout the entire cube. The net result here is that we're able to create not just a seismic facies map based on a specific horizon or surface, but we are in fact able to create a seismic facies volume. And this is significant because when we break our facies into a series of different discrete units, which then, when correlated back to well data, and we do cross plot work as well, we are able to get a better understanding of what that particular seismic facies may represent from a lithophases or from a combination of lithophases and fluid responses. We're then able to move out from what is predicted just where the wells may be out into areas of the cube, which may not have been previously drilled. So this has far-reaching um, implications. The cross-section on your upper left here shows an inverse distance um, propagation of the gamma ray log, propagated and controlled in the vertical sense by our relative geological time model. This would be a very simple property model, example of one of our simple property models. 
you can see in cross-sectional view, it has quite an attractive sort of look to it. We can see the shell faces, um, sandy, sh sandier, um, you know, shell faces um, finding outwards into the more deep water shales. But in map view, it has sort of our classic problem of interpolation um, in that what we have is a, a bullseye effect in this case because of the very simple inverse distance approach. So the data are clustered around certain strong data points. And in map view, it's not a very realistic geological representation of the subsurface. However, if we co-crig with the seismic facies volume, assuming that we have done a careful um, sort of job with the seismic facies analysis, we're able to, instead of propagating the well data strictly by the statistical um, weighted values, we're able now to distribute the gamma ray log in this particular case away from the well bore and controlled by what we consider to be a seismic facies volume that represents the depositional environments in a much more robust or geologically realistic fashion than a simple statistical um, interpolation. So this kind of summary figure shows the surface where we have in fact co-crigged with the seismic facies volume and we're showing here a distribution of the gamma ray logs um, away from the well bore, well control. We think this is a really powerful tool. We can also see variations in the facies even within a particular type of environment. So a channel form, for instance, may not necessarily always be sandy, depending on the manner in which deposition is occurring as the system moves down dip. The 3D property models here um, in the cross-sectional view we're just showing a simple inverse distance, just to visually show the difference between the inverse distance correlation and the map view here, the co crigging with our seismic facies volume, which is shown in the bottom right. Another um, tool that we uh, employ is one of cross-plotting well log data to create little facies plots. So this tool is within the Paterscan software, and in this case we are cross-plotting VP um, VS, um, divided by VS, against acoustic impedance. And by selecting very discrete polygons or families or um, 2D cross plot space, we're able to populate our little faces into a series of um, clearly defined um, units. This allows us to sort of move beyond purely quantitative, qualitative, sorry, analysis into a slightly more quantitative approach to looking at little faces. We can do the same thing with our seismic facies volumes. Um, this is an example um, of our VPVS and AI volumes. Um, I have to state that this is just for illustrative purposes because we have created these volumes from a very limited data set. Um, but I want to just demonstrate that we can also cross plot the VPVS against acoustic impedance in the volume um, sort of space. And once again, we can create polygons and create very distinct seismic facies volumes that in this case are driven by cross plots. And we have a, a series of hybrid workflows that we also do where we combine um, the geoteric interactive seismic faces approach with the cross plotting tools available to us in PaleoScan. So the net result is that we're able to um, walk and, and analyze your data sets um, through a variety of steps from very simple structure maps all the way through seismic faces analysis and ultimately to co-crigging 3D property models um, or creating co 3D property volumes from our um, modeled um, results together with the petrophysical analysis. From this step, we are able then to create our static reservoir geocellular model. And this, like I said earlier, is in a format that we can export in a binary format that's um, compatible with Eclipse. So in summary, um, our workflows are really um, designed to provide very rapid analysis in the complete 3D volume sense based on your seismic cubes and based on your well log data sets, taking your information all the way through from structure and stratigraphy all the way through to our 3D property models and then ultimately to a static model for your teams. I'd like to thank you um, so much for your attention. You know, please spend some time and check our website out. We're subsurfaceclarity.com. 
Um, you can connect us, connect with us through our website. You can also connect via the APG apps in this virtual conference. We're just a click away, and we would love to visit with you and your teams and maybe spend more time delving into the technical components of our workflows and some of the philosophies and approaches that we apply to our analysis. The original data set here, I'd just like to thank um, the public data set is the Maui 3D volume. That's the original data and the original well logs. All the analysis are our own. And it is from the New Zealand Petroleum and Mines Division. Thank you so much, and I look forward to um, connecting with you in the future.